So this video is primarily designed for CAD users, uh, people who want to take the TorquePi model and just tweak it a little bit and um, adjust some settings. So the first thing you need to do is to head to blender.org and come over to where it says download Blender 2.79b. We'll click that and you'll be presented with this dialog. Now we want to get Blender 2.80 beta. So click on that, download Blender 2.8 and install it. Just choose which OS you're using and which installer. So once you have Blender 2.8 installed, we, you'll be presented with um, this viewport. So we're going to go and go to File, Open, and select the TorquePi case. In this case, the Blender 2.8 version. Open the Blender file, and you will have the two um, pieces here ready to work on. So I have my scene set up to, if you come down here to these panel tabs and click on the scene settings, which is this icon right here. I have my scene set up so that um, it's set to metric and my length is in millimeters. So it should be, when you open the, the scene file, it should be set to that by default. And just a quick navigational um, bit of information. If you press the Alt key down and left mouse button, you can tumble your view. You can also come up here and press Z to get a top view. This icon here will switch from isometric to perspective view. Um, the same deal, you have Y, X, you can go to those views anytime here. And if you move your mouse up and just click and drag, you can also orbit your view from up here. The other thing we'll be working with are these viewport displays. So you can have wireframe, solid, uh, solid with lighting, and then a rendered view. Just make sure that also you can see here my scene was set to render in cycles. So when I update, it's going to take a little bit of time to update. So we'll switch that to EV. And if we come up to the this icon here, which is like it's like the back of a camera, and we'll switch our render engine to EV. Now our viewport will re refresh much faster. So solid view and wireframe view. Now the main reason you would do this if if you're um, Work, working with the Torquay Pi or, or building a Torquay Pi and you're finding that some of the measurements aren't lining up with your components properly, it's quite easy to come in here and just nudge the, um, the vertices of the model to change the shape. And we can do that by just switching, I'll switch to top view up here, Z. I'll also switch to wireframe. And if I have both my pieces selected by right clicking, so if I press Alt-A, it'll deselect everything. A will also select everything. Or you can um, right-click and Shift-right-click to select the second piece, so both are selected. With both pieces selected, uh, let's go into Edit Mode by pressing the Tab key. Okay, so once we're in Edit Mode, we can then select vertices and, and start moving um, vertices around. So say for instance we needed to uh, create a little bit more room in this section here and we need to move this wall out one millimeter. So the simplest way to do that is to press B on your keyboard to bring up your box selection tool, draw a box around those vertices. And we'll also need to adjust the lid uh, by the same amount. So we'll press B and we'll grab those vertices there and that will move these vertices as well as well as these in line with the amount that we're going to shift there. So I'm just going to press 7 on my numeric keyboard or you can press Z back up top here to get back to your top view and to nudge these vertices one millimeter in this direction to give us a bit more room all we need to do is just press G on the keyboard Y to constrain it to the Y axis and then we'll just type one on the numeric keyboard and you can just see it just nudged at one millimeter uh, up on the y-axis and press enter 
on the keyboard. Now we've just adjusted that file by one millimeter increasing the size here. And if you need to measure any of these uh, dimensions, it's basically a, a case of, I just press seven on my numeric keyboard, snap it back to the top view. So your, num your numeric keyboard will allow you to um, switch from top view is seven, uh, one is your Y axis view, three, is your x-axis view and so once you get used to using those keyboard sh shortcuts you can get around quite quickly and if you press 5 uh, that switches you back from uh, orthographic to perspective and back to orthographic again just by pressing 5 it just toggles between the two so um, we'll go back to our top view now if we want to measure um, parts of these uh, models I'll switch back to my edit view and I'm just making sure I'm up in the vertex selection mode up here. So you've got vertex, edge, and faces. So I switch to edge, you can start moving edges around, um, or switch to face view, you can select whole faces and move faces around. But vertex selection is going to be the best option for what we're doing here. So I'm going to, if I want to measure um, part of this model, I'm going to switch back to a solid view. We can come over here to the measure tool and click the measure tool and you can see it's just popped up a, a measure um, distance which is what I had up a little bit before I'd, I'd pre pre done this. So I can grab this this point here of this this line and drag it to any point uh, and that's just if I drag it you'll see I want to snap it to this point here if I hold the control key down I can snap, snap to vertices and I'll grab this edge, this end here and snap it to this vertex here and that will give me a measurement um, of, these, of this distance here. And you can do all the measurements you want by, um, by just coming into to that tool there. And if I click on this point and control click snap it to here. I can come back to this first point and make sure that's snapped and you can see here it's giving me a measurement 1.6 millimeters. You can also do angles with this method as well so if you select two points um, for instance if I draw a measurement from here to here I'll just control click to snap it to that vertex and I'll do the same for this one here. Now if I grab the middle of this, this line here and drag it, I can then snap that to another vertex and it's telling me what the angle is of these two faces, which is 90 degrees in this case. So that's another good way of getting the angles um, of, uh, of geometry. So with those basic tools, you can you can come in here and change any dimension you want. Uh, so for instance, if this this little slot here is not lining up properly, I would switch to wireframe view and come back up here to my selection tool, and I can just do a box select around these vertex vertices here and nudge them on the y-axis, you get your x on y-axis. If I needed to open up a little bit or close up or shift it this way, a millimeter say for instance, we'll shift it uh, in this direction, which will be, this is positive y is, is coming this way, so that direction is going to be negative y. So if I want to move it one millimeter this way, it's just a case of g, y, minus one, enter. So I just pressed minus one on the mirror keyboard and it's just nudged it back that way. Now if I undo that, now if you wanted to go half a millimeter, it was G, Y, minus 0.5. And it's just nudged it uh, half a millimeter. Or quarter of a millimeter, G, Y, minus 0.25. So you can see you can quite easily um, tweak and adjust these, these parts as you like. Uh, and if you turn on the move tool icon here, you've got your transform tool here which shows you everything or just move. Then you can also um, just manually nudge 
components around uh, to to line up to your particular uh, components uh, nudge geometry around to line up to your particular components so as you can see it's quite easy to to manipulate the mesh and, and make tweaks and changes and, ha and have numeric control over it um, now once you've done that you will want to export for printing so you can support export both pieces at once but uh, you'll need to rotate this over which we can do I'll switch to uh, uh, X view X axis view by, by three on my numeric keyboard and we want to flip this over 180 degrees so it's just press R on the keyboard 180 type in 180 enter and now we can bring that back down to um, to the floor here and if I have a look I should have the base set to uh, the origin point of this model to be set to the base so if I press alt G it'll snap it back to zero and then G Y I can move it back across I'll do the same here alt G G Y so I set the origin point of both these pieces to be this face here so alt G will just set that back to zero so that'll ensure that on the Z axis the up and down that they're both flush on the on the bottom here so now we can export those two pieces together shift select to make sure they're both selected I go file export STL uh, make sure your scene, you, scene, your selection only is ticked on your scale we're going to set it to 1000 and our scene unit is ticked on and apply modifiers always leave apply modifiers on uh, by default so we'll export that and the apply modifiers will just apply any modifiers that uh, need to be applied before export in this case there are no modifiers on this mesh so it won't do anything but it doesn't matter to have ticked on by default so now if the file load into Cura you can see now we're ready to slice so that's it that's how you can take the model the blender model into uh, blender and just make any adjustments you need for tweaking and then um, export it back out for printing and this is primarily for CAD users who are unfamiliar with the way blender works once you get into it it's very easy to to manipulate the mesh and, and, and make tweaks and adjustments and uh, you'll, you'll find it um, you can quickly make the changes you need to make well that's it for this one uh, thanks very much for watching and i'll catch you later